The Cube at OpenStack Summit Atlanta 2014 is brought to you by Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. And Red Hat. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract a signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by my co-host, Stu Miniman, analyst at wikibon.org. And our next special guest has been in space, which is a notable CUBE alumni, first on theCUBE. We have somebody who's actually been in space. Mark Shuttleworth, founder of Ubuntu, um, industry legend, uh, founder, entrepreneur. Welcome to theCUBE. It's great to be here, thank you. Um, great story, you went to space on the Russian space station. You actually had to work. What an experience, uh, very notable. And we just like to highlight the, uh, when you're a tech athlete like yeah, yourself, I, I, it's, it's I, great. I would wash dishes if it got me into the space station again. There's no, <laughs> no issue with the working, yeah. Um, and also, you know, obviously serial entrepreneur, you had some great successes, been, been in the business for a long time, um, super, super awesome. Um, OpenStack, we are here in live in Atlanta where it's been quoted already in this morning, this is one of the great communities of our generation. You've yeah, seen so. Linux and you've seen a lot of stuff like Apache and open source, just done amazing things. Uh, what's your take on it? And, and I know that for Linux, you've been a great part of that with your participation in, 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 in getting the code out there in your previous companies. And what's going on with OpenStack today? Tell the folks out there, in your opinion, where are we with this? Well, so OpenStack is the, the bearing fruit of uh, taking Linux from the individual node up to the cluster and to the cloud. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that this is where the future of infrastructure is being defined, right here in Atlanta this, uh, this week and Paris in six months' time. Uh, awesome community, uh, and also really a springboard for the next generation of thinking about computing at scale. That's why every vendor is here. Uh, that's why these conversations are so, you know, people are so passionate about these conversations. Uh, and that's why you're starting to see the beginnings of the next wave of innovation um, uh, that sort of just assumes that you can consume resources at scale in a way that you know, Linux itself first lets you consume resources from a single node. So about the value creation opportunity. We were just talking on the previous segment this morning around the disruption and what that really does when you start looking at kind of the value chains within the operator's environment or customer environments, whether it's an enterprise or service provider. The absolute devastation, decimation of value chains. Roles are changing, the future of IT, future of, of software development's even changing. And, right. and certainly the gear's getting better. Splash has helped for, with persistence. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. what, what, is the, what does the disruption look like in terms of value creation? Where do you see it? As an entrepreneur, you have that, that eye. What's, what's the value of creation opportunity? Well, well I'm, I'm absolutely certain it's not in the obvious places. Right? <laughs> Just as it wasn't 20 years ago with the internet itself, um, there is always you know, an, an obvious set of places that people focus on, uh, and, and the real value is, isn't there. Um, in part because I think there are too many people chasing them, it becomes too noisy, too confused, too, too, too much in the way of vendor politics. Um, it's kind of the fog of disruption, right? You, you know instinctively that this is a profound change, everything will change, but it's very difficult to identify where, you know, wh where the great new companies will come from. Um, uh, 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 my particular view is that we need open platforms, open ecosystems. Uh, OpenStack fundamentally depends on a healthy ecosystem to succeed. And we, Ubuntu, are an ecosystem enabler. We don't compete with the ecosystem. We are an interoperability enabler. We run the largest um, OpenStack interop lab, where we do continuous interop testing across uh, the products of many, uh, something like 14 uh, of the major players and many more smaller players in OpenStack. So we essentially provide a, a great way for customers to know if they want to build a cloud with pieces from these six you different You certify vendors. the picks and shovels, if you will, for the tooling and, and sure. the technology. On a, on a continuous basis, because that's what's so dynamic about the cloud, right? In the, in the, in the good old days, <laughs> you could certify this product and that product to work with an operating system. But now you have to certify, in this dynamic world, you have to certify that they continue to work, that you continue to be able to build clouds and scale them in a very real, real-time kind of way. So, Mark, in, in the last survey of Open uh, OpenStack users, uh, you know Ubuntu was far and away, you know, the, the number one, mm -hmm. uh, you know, operating system there. Um, th th there's some that say that that really points to that OpenStack is really in test dev, and you know, it's a it's a free operating system. Um, you know, wh where do you think we sit today, and, and what's what's Ubuntu's role going forward for OpenStack? Well, Ubuntu obviously became famous as the developer's choice, but that was uh, that was ten years ago. Um, today, the major production clouds, which are commercial engagements, those are on Ubuntu and we provide commercial support on commercial terms, technical support on commercial terms to the world's biggest OpenStack deployments, uh, from banking through um, telecoms, through media, 
Um, many of the, you know, the references that will be celebrated on stage here, most, if not all, of the references that will be celebrated on stage here are in fact building on Ubuntu and doing it commercially, right? It's very serious infrastructure for them. I think people do see OpenStack and the cloud as a reset, and so they, they don't necessarily want to bring 20 years of baggage to, the, to that new world. Um, they want the reassurance that their existing workloads and so on will work great, and they do. Um, we've done a lot of work across all of the Linux distributions and Windows so that OpenStack on Ubuntu is, is fantastic for, for running whatever kind of workloads you, you care about. As people put their toe in the water, actually come into the water for OpenStack, what do you advise them in terms of approaches? I mean, from a business model standpoint, some people look at it as a product versus a platform. What's the one -oh, quick OpenStack 101 for the newbies coming in? Whether, you know, serious IT guys wanting to do the reset. You know, what do you, what do you advise them? Stay away from X, Y, and Z, it's not this or that. What, do you, what advice you say you know, when you describe OpenStack? Uh, the first thing I'd say is that you, you absolutely have to have an OpenStack story. Um, and the second thing is that you have to have an OpenStack story that doesn't depend on you winning everything, right? There's no single vendor that, um, that will uh, 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 own OpenStack. Uh, plenty will try, but it just won't work that way in the same way that it, it didn't with Linux. And uh, so the key thing is to be here, to have a very clear idea of, of how your existing portfolio maps into OpenStack, but also an idea of just how much OpenStack changes the world and what parts of your, your portfolio are going to go away or commoditize, which is you know, a very real uh, issue for, for many existing players. Uh, but there's a lot of value to be had. It's just further up the stack. It's in more interesting new um, sort of greenfield opportunities. So, Mark, do you think that OpenStack can really move forward without like a clear leader or a couple of companies that, that are you know in, in in charge? If I if I think about open source projects in general, that there's usually some you know strong uh, you know people at the front. You know from from Linus Trevallis when he first started. You know Red Hat and Drupal. Uh, you know have had some some you know pretty strong well known names. So you know yeah. what, what's your take on kind of the OpenStack leadership? Well, I think this is a very real uh, uh, question. You know the, the classic story is that nobody cares about an open source project until it is in fact well grounded. Um, and in that time of, of formation, that open source project really establishes its ground rules, it establishes its core leads and leaders. Um, in the case of Linux, right, that was Linus and his, and his kind of deputies. Um, and, and that then gives the project a sort of strong leadership core. OpenStack didn't have that. OpenStack became uh, you know, an, an industry focus before it really existed as a project. Um, and I think that is a real challenge. Uh, it, it, it means that we, we, we don't really have an independent governance structure, or sorry, we don't have an independent leadership structure. There's plenty of governance. Um, however, I think that will emerge, and the fact that all of the vendors are here ultimately is what makes OpenStack the important framework. Yes, it will make you know, clarity difficult, but, but at the end of the day, the only question is, is this the place that everyone will be? And we have the answer right here, right? So um, I don't, I think there are challenges there, but nothing that derails OpenStack. What do you take of all this um, pass competition? Obviously Cloud Foundry, Red Hat's not involved in that, but they've been getting people involved. Um, is that kind of a, a land grab, or is that just part of OpenStack? Is that the way OpenStack should work? That people can have a part of OpenStack and be okay with it? Right, I think, the, I think th these, um, these new projects um, are, are really important. OpenStack won't be the, you know, the fo everybody's focus for 10 years, right? It, it's an interesting topic now, it will settle down, and then the spotlight will move elsewhere, and platform as a service is a very interesting area. Um, we still think there's a lot of room for innovation, a lot of room for creativity, a lot of room for diversity. We kind of, six months ago, um, a, a, you know, very, came out very strongly in favor of Cloud Foundry as one of the, one of the leading platforms and it's gratifying now to see others essentially um, follow that lead. We will have a fully supported Cloud Foundry option on Ubuntu for uh, folks, and that's supported by both Pivotal and Canonical. Um, and other people will do Cloud Foundry distributions as well. But that said, I think you know, a healthy ecosystem requires diverse perspectives, so OpenShift is, uh, it's, it's great that it exists, um, and uh, you know, it remains, remains to be seen how the market will play out. Certainly Linux, Red Hat's got a good position on Linux. I'm interested to see how that plays out. Uh, what's your take on the developer market these days? Obviously, has it changed? I mean, a lot's changed in open source over the years. Mm -hmm. Certainly you're seeing Linux, which would, had a lot of restrictions relative to memory management. Now with, with Flash, we've seen some great innovations with yeah. Linux kernel. And just in general, this new, new generation of guys coming into the business. Young right. guns and old school dudes like us who, who have systems backgrounds. Is it changing, and if how, what are the key things you're seeing 
the software development. Certainly, you talk to a young kid these days, talking to a young kid in their 20s, like, I don't install patches. Well, well, they don't get the concept of patching something. Right. <laughs> it's like, but okay, that's a mindset. Okay, it's a new generation. What's changed? Well, I think, I think that the key thing to learn is that uh, us guys who've been around a little while, we have to learn from from the new generation. There's a, region, there's a reason people don't install patches because virtual machines don't live long enough to, for that necessarily to matter. They spin up another thousand tomorrow, right? <laughs> exactly. And, and I, think, I think that is what's fun about the industry, that, yeah. that, that, that key tenants um, you know, become pillars and then eventually get torn down and replaced by new pillars. Um, uh, that automation, that orchestration story is very profound. And folks who haven't, go to jujucharms.com and take a look at the next wave of automation and orchestration. Um, uh, the, the next generation, those, those kids, are essentially not interested in building everything from scratch. They want to consume the very best practices stuff, pull it together from, um, from you know, the cloud, and very quickly spin up their, their production operating sites. So something like Juju gives you the ability to tap into crowdsource operational and, um, yeah. and code excellence. And then, and then spin it up on any cloud, um, uh, you know, at, at any scale you like. So m magic juju there is, is that you know you can move things up quickly. So that that's the Lego block generation. Exactly. Okay. Now the iPad generation. Now the kids are moving off I to iPads. Now the babies now are not building Lego blocks. They're using the iPad. So it'll be interesting to see what that generation does. Well, juju is like uh, software Lego. You essentially compose the pieces that you care about. Um, each of those is a project. They they get better. You don't have to worry about it. Um, and uh, you can focus on the, the pieces that you really care about. So that's, that's a layer above OpenStack or any other cloud, essentially. Uh, that's where the real value comes from in empowering developers. Yeah. So, so Mark, if we, we talk about kind of the IT staff. Uh, obviously, this OpenStack and everything that's happening is going to you know, change the makeup. Do you think that the, the, the Linux administrator has an advantage? You know, are they going to be able to go to Juju, Chef, Puppet, and, and the like easier than kind of a, a, a typical infrastructure person who uh, our, our last guest on said, you know, we, we can't wait for everybody to become a magical unicorn. If I, somebody that can manage everything and code, I mean, coding's tough for a lot of people. So, right. you know, what, what, what's, the, what's the IT staff of the future look like in your mind? There's always, uh, there's always demand for folks who, you know, make stuff work, who understand the stack. Um, I do think, you know, like everything, we're moving to, uh, uh, we're moving up the skill stack, you know, and and uh, that's for most people that's fun and enjoyable, right? Learn new things, grow your skills, expand your expand expand your your ability to to deliver value. Um, I, I have no doubt that um, you know there will be pressures on people to acquire new skills. One of the key stories in Juju is to make it possible for folks to. Um, deploy, scale, and manage things that they haven't deeply studied, right? You want to crowdsource um, all of the operational magic. Um, that still requires highly specialized people to be able to balance resources, understand what the priorities are, um, and, and I think people enjoy doing things where, where, where they feel that they're, they're um, more aligned with what, what work people are actually trying to get done, rather than you know, in the guts of the machine trying to make it work. Mark, where do you see your business going as this evolves? Obviously, you guys are doing the testing, which is really critical. That probably be much more real time, I guess. I can imagine. Uh, you know, we are living in an API systems architecture, if you will. Um, how is that going to change your business and how you guys uh, are going to execute? Sure. Uh, well, as a platform, you know, Canonical is the company behind Ubuntu, so we offer commercial technical support to the largest deployments of, of OpenStack and other kind of distributed infrastructures. And uh, that's growing. The scale of this conference, I think, is an indication. The vast majority of the large commercial deployments here are, are all on Ubuntu and supported by us. Um, uh, uh, on top of that, I think we'll see new layers of, of commercial opportunity, right? Um, as people move up the stack and they focus more on um, what they get done with the cloud, uh, that creates new opportunities. So we'll, we'll play both at the platform level, making sure that people are fully supported all the way down to the metal. Um, and in the, in the higher levels, making it possible for people to innovate much faster. Mark, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. I want to give you the final word. What should people be worried about right now in the ecosystem? What should they be watching, if you will? Because right now it's a healthy ecosystem. Obviously the numbers speak for themselves inside the hall, up from Portland, obviously standing room only. Um, tons of interest, it's a sea change. Um, we want to look for where this potentially could be smoke and fire. We want to keep the alarms open. What should we be afraid of and what will, what will What's the only thing holding back OpenStack? What do we should we watch out for? Well, no, I don't think there's any issues at, at the OpenStack level. I think you, you, if you come here, you get a real sense of vibrancy and so on. I think the risk is spending too much time, you know, uh, uh, staring at the perceived competitors. 
uh, we saw it today. You know, uh, you know, you don't create greatness, you know, out of being, you know, afraid of what someone else is doing. There's a huge amount of investment in the cloud, um, and the key thing for OpenStack and for this community is to be, you know, part of that, um, rather than rather than sort of defining itself as the antithesis of what uh, what other vendors are doing. So the final final question: Share the folks in your own words. Why is this point in time here in Atlanta for OpenStack Summit? such a game changer, why are, is everyone so excited about what's going on right now? Uh, everything that you have been doing for the last 15 years is going to change to a greater or lesser degree. And OpenStack um, and cloud more broadly are, are part of that. This is the forum where the open cloud is being defined. So it's the only place where you can really get deep into that new level of infrastructure and really understand how it all comes together. So it's a lot of fun and, uh, and for folks who who uh, throw it together on Ubuntu, you'll have an absolute blast. Great, thanks for all your help uh, in the industry. You've been great, the success has been fantastic. You've enabled a lot of folks, a lot of fans commenting on, they fall in love with the software from the beginning. It's been a big part of their lives and continuing that. And uh, great to hear the stories and commentary. Uh, Mark, thanks for coming to theCUBE. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest. After this short break, we now have someone who's been in space and on theCUBE. That's going to go in, in our archives forever. So thanks for watching, we'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>